Welcome to uh, our presentation today. Uh, my name is Beat Büser, and I'm presenting today here with Abigail Goldstein. We are both developers and maintainers of the Adversarial Robustness Toolbox, and we are working as research staff members for IBM Research. Our talk today is titled Evasion, Poisoning, Extraction, and Inference, the Tools to Defend and Evaluate. What we will cover today is an introduction to the adversarial threats against AI and machine learning. And we will introduce the open source project, the Adversarial Robustness Toolbox, or short ART. In the second half, we will be presenting privacy attacks against machine learning models, including an actual demonstration of the tools with a focus on attribute and membership inference attacks. And we will show how you can defend using differential privacy including a demonstration of a related open source project. The emerging adversarial threats against AI and machine learning can be grouped into four different main threats, uh, which include uh, uh, evasion, poisoning, extraction, and inference. And visualized on this simple machine learning pipeline consisting of training data and the machine learning that is trained on it, it can be attacked uh, by evasion, by the process of modifying input to influence the model's behavior to, for example, misclassify an input. Poisoning uh, describes the task of modifying the training data with the goal to add, for example, a backdoor in, the train, in a model trained on this training data, which can later be exploited to influence the machine learning model's behavior. Extraction is the process of actually stealing a model, which is very important if the model is proprietary and very valuable, but also is often an entrance uh, during the reconnaissance phase of an attack, uh, which will come back in later slides too. And very important for today's presentation in the second part today is the inference thread, which is the process of going through a trained machine learning model with the goal to learn the information about uh, sensitive private information that is contained in the training data solely by accessing a trained machine learning model. There's a great and detailed overview that has been recently published available on GitHub, uh, and I'm showing the link here on the bottom. And uh, I, I would like to encourage everybody to take a closer look there if you would like to uh, dive deeper into this topic. These are not just uh, theoretical threats. These are also, uh, we see an increasing number of real world uh, exploits of these adversarial threats. For example, uh, uh, evasion attacks against classification models that are used in antivirus products. The threat there is, of course, uh, un undetected randomware uh, can install and decrypt your computers and create very, very expensive damages. Uh, there are also physical real world adversarial attacks using patches uh, for evasion attacks on self driving cars. Uh, for example, putting stickers on, <clears throat> on driving lanes and uh, traffic signs with the goal to influence the behavior of a self driving car. So, resulting then in losing control of autonomous vehicles and uh, leading to great damages and injuries and chaos. Um, uh, the third example is, for example, the e extraction threat, which has been demonstrated that uh, classification models contained in applications can, can be extracted and then used to stage uh, evasion attacks, for example, against email protection systems. And this allows really bypassing these security systems uh, to increase the chances of phishing attacks, for example. Uh, the fourth example that we would like to show is really re revealing, uh, using uh, based on the inference threat that it could reveal whether a person is suffering from a certain disease based on a membership inference attack on, on a model that is used for classification of, uh, this, uh, of, of a certain disease. And here the really the big threat is the leaking of sensitive private information, which is regulated and protected by laws and uh, also by uh, large uh, fines if such leaks occur. Now, as we see, there's an increasing number of these real-world threats, 
uh, there's also the combination of these threats. And here we would like to just quickly point on the vulnerability note that we are showing here. And we are listing three links which provide much more detailed information. But the reason why we find this vulnerability note so interesting is because it's demonstrating the combination of two threats of uh, extraction and evasion to increase the impact and fe uh, feasibility of adversarial attacks. And uh, here, the, uh, the attacking this application, uh, an application that is leaking information on the internal classification, on its uh, classification decisions, allows in a first step uh, to create a data set of input labels and pairs by querying the application repeatedly, and then train a surrogate classification model on this new data set. Uh, this is kind of the first step of extracting the classification model that is part of this of the attacked application. This, the second step then contains uh, applying this classification model and use the insight on, on the application's classification to actually craft adversarial examples and then use these uh, adversarial examples to achieve the attack's goal, which can be, for example, the misclassification of spam emails. And uh, the, these are, uh, here we would like them to introduce the adversarial robustness toolbox ART. So ART is an open source library for machine learning security and it's hosted by the Linux Foundation for AI and Data. And it's available on GitHub in the trusted AI workspace. And the goal of ART is to provide tools to developers and researchers to enable them to evaluate and defend machine learning models and applications against these four threats that we have just uh, introduced. <clears throat> now, BART uh, started as an image classification uh, toolbox, but has since then uh, grown and been extended to also cover all possible machine learning tasks, including object detection and automated speech recognition. And it's still growing into other tasks. Uh, BART is also framework uh, independent, so it supports all possible all popular frameworks, including TensorFlow, PyTorch, Scikit-Learn, and many more. And we, as art started with images, it has pretty soon then grown into supporting tabular data, and recently also in, in supporting audio and video data, and even multimodal uh, data combinations. So while art is providing uh, attack tools, we see art as a as a vital tool. So. The attacks that are provided in art, we aim to, to make them state of the art, but we want them, uh, we see them as tools to evaluate the machine learning models in, in red team like uh, approaches so that we can really evaluate the threats and be, become aware of the possible vulnerability of AI and ML based uh, applications. So in that sense, we see the tools as evaluation tools for poisoning, inference, and ex extraction and evasion threats. But ART also uh, uh, provides uh, routine tools, which uh, 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 the selection uh, shown here, which uh, examples for these tools are, for example, uh, tools for adversarial training. So these are uh, special training algorithms to make machine learning models more robust against evasion attacks. Uh, ART also includes uh, detection tools for poison and evasion. And also, um, more recently, ART has been extended to provide also <coughs> certification and verification tools, which allow to certify <coughs> or to verify trained machine learning models on their robustness or vulnerability to these four uh, adversarial threats. <coughs> There's also a growing ecosystem around art, and we would like to uh, mention three examples. The first one is Armory. It's an adversarial robustness evaluation testbed, which uh, builds on the tools of art. It runs, it allows you to run evaluations with art locally or scaled in the cloud using Docker containers. And it's, uh, it's available on GitHub and uh, developed by our colleagues at 26 Labs. And we are working closely to work together uh, and bring Armory and Art closer together. A very interesting and very exciting uh, new open source project is Counterfeit, 
which uh, is soon to be open sourced. Uh, it's, a, it's a command line tool to simplify running evaluations uh, with ART in your local terminal. And uh, we have seen some previews and we find them very, very exciting. And so be on the Outlook on GitHub uh, when it will be released soon. The third one is the uh, AI privacy tool quit, uh, which will also be soon available open source. It's a, it will provide tools for privacy and compliance of AI models and uh, provide end-to-end -end privacy evaluation and mitigation of privacy risks. And it will be available in the IBM workspace on GitHub. Now, the tools of art uh, can be grouped into six uh, sub-modules. And just to give you a quick overview of the organization of the art library, I would just like to highlight this, uh, these modules to, to give you an overview. So the most important one is the attacks module, which uh, contains all the white box, black box, and in between uh, attacks, and also physical attacks with patches. Then we have an estimate, art has an estimators module, which contains the abstractions of your machine learning model that you would like to evaluate and make it com uh, compatible with the attacks and the defenses. There's an evaluations module, which contains higher level tools for evaluation of robustness that automate a certain, to a certain degree the, the attacks. Uh, there's a metrics module, which provides tools for quantifying robustness and similar metrics. There's a defenses module that contains uh, defenses against attacks, including adversarial training, uh, pre-processing and post-processing defenses. With the defense module, we always would like to add the disclaimer that all, most or all of these defenses have been broken to a certain degree. So be careful when you apply them uh, to follow the recent evaluation literature. And then we also have a pre-processing module, which contains, uh, which allows you to implement any modification of your input data. And the most ex uh, one of the most exciting uh, tools that we provide called this expectation of transformations, which allows you to uh, uh, train your model on, uh, on uh, random perturbations to make it more robust and uh, also the attacks much uh, stronger. Now, I'm highlighting two submodules sub in pink here. So these are the inference attacks and the classification estimators. And these are the two uh, submodules that uh, uh, Abigail is now going to present in the second part of the presentation. And I'm happy to hand over to Abigail. Okay, so I'm going to focus specifically on two types of inference attacks, namely attribute inference and membership inference. And anyone interested in other types of attacks is welcome to check out the inference module in art. So the first attack I'm going to talk about is called attribute inference. And here we assume that an attacker knows that a specific sample was part of the training data of a, of a model. Um, and they know they have partial information about that sample and they want to learn the value of some other unknown, um, potentially sensitive feature. Um, and there are two modes in which this attack can be applied. Um, in, the back, in the black box setting, um, we assume that the attacker only has access to the output of a machine learning model. And in the white box setting, we assume that the attacker also knows um, internal details about the model, such as its architecture and weights, etc. cetera. Um, the threat here is obviously um, leaking the information about these um, sensitive features, which can be a person's salary, their sexual orientation, etc. cetera. Um, and the um, way that this attack works is that um, usually the known features as well as the model's predictions are used to infer um, the value of the missing feature. And one way this can be done is by varying the value of the target feature and checking which value um, causes the most similar outcome. Um, in ART, there are three implementations of attribute inference attacks, two white box attacks for decision tree models and one black box attacks. Now I'm going to show an example of how to use one of those attacks. Um, so I'm using uh, the publicly available uh, nursery data set. Um, it's used for um, deciding on nursery placement for children based on characteristics of their family. 
It has eight features, all of them categorical. And the feature that I'm going to try to attack today is called social, and it represents the social health of the family. So obviously this is very sensitive information. Um, originally, this is a categorical feature with three possible values. Um, in order to increase the chances of success of the attack, we turn this into a binary feature by combining two of the values to a single value. Um, and the data has also been one hot encoded and scaled. So this is what the data looks like. Um, and this is the social feature that we're going to try to attack. Um, you can see that the zeros and ones have been replaced by some other floating point values due to scaling, but still it's a binary feature. It only has two possible values. Um, here we're training a regular scikit-learn decision tree uh, model with our training data. And in order to use this model within art and be able to apply a tax to it, um, we need to create this wrapper class called scikit-learn decision tree classifier. Um, and we pass as input the model that we've just trained. So the black box attacks, attack consists of an attack model that's trained on the seven remaining features along with the model's prediction to try to infer the value of the attacked feature, in this case, the social feature. Um, it's important to train the attack on a different data set than it's going to be evaluated on. And since in this case, we want to evaluate the attack on the original model's training data, we're going to train it on the original model's test data. Uh, another option would have been to take the training data and just divide it into two sets and use one for training the attack and the other one for evaluating it. Um, here we're going to do the inference phase. And for that, we need to prepare a data set that does not contain the attack feature. So that's what we're doing here. We're deleting the attack feature from the training data. And we need the model's predictions. And we're also passing um, this other parameter called values. Um, it's the actual floating point values of the missing feature so that the attack can translate its predictions back um, to those values just so it'll be easier to compare to the original data. And here we can see that the accuracy of the attack, of the attack is around 70%. However, it's important to note that when looking at the frequency of the uh, different values in the original data set, the most frequent value is actually present in 66% of the data. So this is only a little bit better than random guessing. Um, there's also a white box attack. And I'm not going to go into too many details, but I just want to mention that in this case, um, since there's no um, internal model used within the attack, um, there's no need to fit it, and you can just directly call the infer method. And you can also see here that the accuracy is slightly higher in the white box case. Um, this is a short recap of what we just saw in the notebook and the results that we were able to achieve. And now I'm going to talk about a second type of attack called membership inference. Here we assume that the attacker has complete knowledge of a specific sample. And what they want to find out is whether it was part of the training set of a model or not. In this case, again, there are two possible modes of attacking, black box and white box, same as before. Um, in art at the moment, uh, there are only black box attacks. Um, here the threat is in cases where knowledge of whether someone was in the training data of a model is in itself sensitive. So take as an example a model that's trying to predict something related to a specific disease. Then the fact that someone participated in the training of this model could be an indication that they have this disease. Um, and the way that these attacks usually work is they try to distinguish between the behavior of the model on samples that it has seen during training and samples that it hasn't seen. In the case of black box attacks, um, we do this based on the output of the model. So this can be either a probability vector, a single predicted label, um, the loss of the model, et cetera. Um, and in art, there are four different um, implementations of membership inference attacks. All of them are black box attacks, um, and these are their names. And now I'm going to demonstrate one of those. Um, so I'm using the same data set as before, the nursery data. 
This time I didn't need to manipulate the social feature because it's not needed. And again, it's one hot encoded and scaled. Um, in the case of this attack, I need a balanced data set. So it needs to be 50% um, training data and 50% test data. And in addition, I'm um, purposefully making the training set um, pretty small. This is again to increase the um, success rate of the attack. So we're going to train a just regular logistic regression model this time. Uh, and same as before, I need to create this art wrapper called Sicket Learn Logistic Regression and pass it the model that I've just trained. And this is the original accuracy of the model, 91%. Um, the black box attack here is um, similar to the one that we uh, showed earlier in that it also trains uh, an attack model. Um, and in this case, we're going to pass for the training of the attack um, half of the original training data and half of the original test data. And we're going to use the remaining halves for the evaluation of the attack. Um, when creating this attack, we can also supply this parameter that tells it what type of attack model to use. And in this case, we're going to use random forest. And here we're applying the attack and checking the accuracy. And we can see that the attack achieves an accuracy of 54%, which is again, a little bit better than random guessing. And again, here's a recap of uh, what we just saw in the notebook and um, the results that we were able to achieve. Now I'm going to present one possible defense against this, against this type of attack, which is based on differential privacy. In differential privacy, a small amount of noise is added during the training process, such that in the resulting model, it will be very difficult to distinguish whether a specific sample was part of the training set or not. Here you can see the mathematical definition of differential privacy. It uses two parameters, epsilon and delta, that determine the level of the privacy guarantee. Um, the smaller these uh, values are, the better the privacy. And I'm going to show you how to build a differentially private model using an open source library called diffprivlib. Of course, there are other options. Now let's look at the example. So training a differentially private model is pretty similar to training a regular model. We just need to pass it two additional parameters. Um, the first is epsilon, which is the privacy parameter that I just talked about. Um, in this case, there is no delta. And the second is the data norm, which is the maximum L2 norm of any record in the data set. And this is used to calibrate the noise that's added during training. So again, we train the model, and then we create the art wrapper. And we can see that the accuracy is very low this time. It's 56%. And I'll get back to this in a moment. But I just want to show what happens with the attack. So I'm running the same attack as before, the black box membership inference attack with the same model type. And we can see that both the accuracy and the precision have been reduced to 51% from 54% earlier. Um, but still, we've, we've lost most of the original accuracy of the model. So we want to see if we can find a better compromise between model accuracy and privacy. So here I'm trying out different uh, possible values of epsilon. And for each one, I'm going to train the differentially private model, um, train my attack, and check the accuracy of the attack. And so let's see what happens with these different values. So when looking at the model accuracy, we can see that as epsilon increases, the model accuracy also increases until it reaches the original accuracy of the model. And when looking at the attack accuracy, we see a similar trend where increasing epsilon increases the accuracy of the attack. Um, there's a few spikes here and there in both directions, and this is due to the randomness of the noise addition. So we can see that we have a trade-off between the model accuracy and the attack accuracy, um, but we can see that around this area with epsilon equals 25 um, looks like a good option in both cases. So I've chosen this value and I run the whole process again. And we can see that we're able to achieve reasonable model accuracy while still reducing the attack accuracy. 
And even though 25 may be considered a relatively high epsilon value, in this specific case, it still provides a de decent defense. And again, we have a recap of what we just saw. So I demonstrated the attacks using ART and the use of differential privacy using diffprivlib. Um, and here we show a few other options of open source tools, both for attacking and assessing models, as well as defending against these attacks. Um, some of these defenses also use differential privacy, and some of them use um, other privacy mechanisms. So this is what we suggest you do in the next weeks and months following this talk. So in the short range, we recommend finding the relevant models, meaning those that were trained on personal data, as well as trying to raise the awareness of the relevant people in your organization regarding these potential risks. In the medium range, we propose to download art and start learning how to use it using the examples and notebooks provided in the tool. In addition, you can try to identify the most relevant attacks for your use case. For example, black box versus white box. And in the longer range, you should identify your high risk models based on how they're deployed or published and vulnerability to one or more of the attacks. And then start applying mitigation strategies. One option is to use open source tools like diffprivlib and AI privacy toolkit and more that provide uh, defenses for models against these types of attacks. Another option is to try to change your training data such that it will contain less personal information. If, for example, you can use public data instead of personal information, that's great. If not, at least try to abstain from using the most sensitive features unless they're really required. And the third thing that can be done is trying to change the model. So you can try out different architectures and model types and evaluate each of them to try to find the one that best suits your needs, both from a privacy perspective and uh, accuracy and other relevant perspectives. Thank you very much for listening and we're here to answer any questions. <laughs>